My name is Marquesa Petway. I'm a business reinvention expert in New York City. I work with entrepreneurs to create six-figure signature systems. And I'm also a proud member of NSA and the creator for the Speaker Toolkit column in Speaker Magazine. And guys, I love this job. Let me tell you why. I get a chance to interview the superstars of our industry, and today is no different. I know you've heard of her because I've heard of her since I first entered the speaking industry a little bit more than 10 years ago. Her name is Lisa Ford. Now her bio is so detailed, if you just go to her website and she's gonna share that with us during the interview, you can hear about all the accolades, but what you definitely need to know is that she's a powerhouse in the customer service industry of speaking. Her uh, best-selling DVD series is how to give excep exceptional customer service. Um, she's also a, a Hall of Fame speaker, so I feel extra privileged, which is also known as the CPAE as well as the CSP. And I asked her, how long have you been in this industry? And she said, she got into this industry in 1983, so clearly she knows her stuff. And here's the big question. I want to know, please share with us, what are some of those best practices and strategies that allow you the, uh, the, well, the reality of dominating your industry? So when folks think of customer service, they think of you leading to that seven-figure club. So welcome, Lisa. So good to have you. And you know what? I can't hear you right now, so make sure you unmute. Thank you very much. I, it's my pleasure to be here with you. Now, I love your question. There's all kinds of strategies, but you really, in describing what it is I do, you pretty much tapped into the first strategy, which is I really chose a topic to go very deep into that topic because my business really is about helping companies create customer focused cultures. And I do that at all levels, at the leadership level, at the frontline level. And then I chose to go very wide into different industries. So I'm not an industry expert, even though I have some industries I really work with a lot more than others, but I stayed real deep in my topic, wide in industries. And I feel that's one of the best decisions I ever really made, was really sticking with that topic and getting known for customer service. Now, Lisa, would you say that a lot of your, the way you grow your business or the fact that you've been able to be in this business for so long successfully is because of referrals from one client to the other? Maybe in your early years, you just said, hey, I'm going to pick up the phone and call people. The social media wasn't around back then. So how did you really like keep it going and get to that top level where you could do this um, in a big way. You're exactly right. Social media wasn't around. It was really about getting on the phone, but doing a great presentation in front of, in many cases, that right audience, like it might be an association group. I, I started working a whole lot with utility companies all those years ago. And if I was working with one utility company, let's say a gas utility company, one very much comes to mind if, up in New Jersey, I chatted with that vice president who had hired me to come into his company, ask him what he might be a member of. Well, he was a member of the New Jersey Utility Association. He got me on that program. That program exposed me to lots of executives there in New Jersey as, as at other utility companies. So great presentation in front of the right audience, and then I could make those phone calls, I could leverage that audience to the next speech, the next opportunity. So that's really what I did. And I will tell you, the other secret I think that's so important, and it's real common sense, you know this so well, is we've got to be easy to do business with. And, I, and, and that really is the customer service piece. It's what I preach, but you can have a great presentation, but if you're prima donna, or you're not somebody who responds very quickly to a left message um, on, a, on a voicemail or an email, then people may not want to do business with you. 
So in some cases, our differentiator may be, yes, a great presentation, but it's also um, some of the other um, things that we've got to really look at, which is how easy are we to do business with? Sorry, see, I'm muted. <laughs> All right. <I'm> muted. <laughs> All right, good. We have other folks checking us out. I love that. In Speaker Magazine Live, we like to have a live audience at times. Now, Lisa, you share with us some great things for working on your business. But if you're working in your business, you know, the back end of it, what are some successful strategies that you implement it very well? It could be around, I had the right team. You know, maybe a close friend worked with me. Uh, I stayed local. What were those magic things that really helped you in your success? Well, none of the things that you mentioned, most likely because I chose to stay very lean. Me, that's it. Uh, I really realized that I could pull it off kind of one presentation at a time, one phone call at a time to build this business. And now the last few years I've linked up with a speaker management company group out of um, California speaker's office. They're great. But I did not do that for a lot of years. It really was just kind of up to me to make it happen. Now, but behind the scenes, I also though was a member of a mastermind group. And that mastermind group was a real plus at that inner circle. You know, you've got people who you can use nearly as your booster rocket. Uh, they can give you advice. We were real honest, transparent with each other so that we could really gain some insights on what to do to be more successful. So I, I think that that inner circle, a mastermind, I chose to stay lean, no virtual assistant, no anything for the majority of my career. Only until recently, when honestly, I am not working as much as I used to, I've kind of farmed a little more of it out to the speaker management group um, that I mentioned. And that was a choice mainly uh, due to some wonderful personalities um, and some opportunities that I thought, hey, it's time to take advantage of that. Uh, but I, I also am a big believer in learning it's kind of one of those odd ones, but I think you know it so well, learning when to say no, because I think saying no really can help us be much more successful. And then that allows you to be able to say yes to the right clients. And I think that leads to client retention. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to appear hungry because I think if we look hungry, then we get ourselves into situations that are not real positive for us. Uh, we might be creating new material we've never even thought about doing and now we're stressed about it and we're not our, at our best when working with that client. So there, there's a number of strategies that I always kind of have in my head. Maybe that's kind of the behind the scenes is what's going on in my head of, I, I gotta say no to this, it's not a fit. Um, I gotta be picky on what I choose to do, because in the long run, I think that leads to client retention and that next presentation. This is like a masterclass, honestly, <laughs> which I love. Now, one other question you mentioned, just to follow up on mastermind, which is a very big deal um, in our association. Um, a lot of folks have read the book, Think and Grow Rich, which is about the mastermind. Lisa, do you find that you mastermind with other speakers in a similar niche or did you choose, you know what, I want speakers that are kind of doing things bigger than me. I think a lot of, uh, especially experienced speakers that are listening, want to know, well, how did you choose your mastermind group? Because it looks like that was a real big part of your, you know, your success pool. Well, they, they asked me into it. It had already been going for about three to four years prior to me. And we were all a little different, but yet had about the same level of success already, longevity, similar incomes. Uh, so I think having people who are more in the same spot as you is important. Uh, and I would say a little different uh, in the way of industries, niches, presentations, I think would be important. So that, that, that's my bias. 
Excellent. Diversify your ma your mastermind and be consistent about meeting with them. Well, this has been amazing. I can't wait for this to be in the magazine and even more so they get to hear it from your mouth. <laughs> now, if folks listening to this uh, want to get in touch with you or reach out, where should they go? Uh, my website is lisaford.com. Very, very easy. Well, it, it's so interesting because it, you have been, you, you probably had that domain name for a while because it would be hard to get lisaford.com right now. Well, I appreciate you and it makes me proud to uh, speak to a fellow CSP and certainly a Hall of Fame speaker such as yourself. So thank you, Lisa Ford, and thank you everyone that listened to this interview. Again, my name is Marquesa Petway out of New York City.